Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. And in this video, I'm going to give a quick update on ThorChain. I'm going to be covering the recent multi-chain chaos net recovery post the hacks and the recent chain halt. Current status, look at the liquidity caps, uh, what they're all about and what that means. The Asgard sharding milestone, which I believe is happening tomorrow. And then have a look at the roadmap ahead. So let's get into it. So if you're new here, I like to explain complex crypto concepts in ways that normal people can understand. I don't talk about price or trading or anything like that, just focusing on the facts and the education. Don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to check out my other videos on ThorChain or general concepts like impermanent loss. To recap, ThorChain was hacked uh, a couple of times and had to stop trading. So you can see two videos of it that I made here. It was clear there were some issues to sort out a bounty program has been created and the code base was audited with many improvements being made to tighten up security. Too many to talk about in this video. You can see the uh, bounty program here. Up to $500,000 uh, maximum bounty for any one issue found. So the audits have been completed both formally by security firms um, and informally by white hat hackers. That said, still waiting on a report from the formal audits but there were bug disclosures inside of some of the ThorChain updates here that you would have seen, which is pretty cool to see. So upon restart, when the chain was actually restarted and things got back to normal, post the hack, liquidity was provided to fix pool imbalances. Node operators and liquidity providers were made whole again, e.g. by like repaying them uh, for the, when the chain was offline. You would have seen some of the details and stuff like that again in the dev updates. So all chains have been restarted within multi-chain chaos net um, and everything's kind of back to normal. Uh, IOP is active and income is being generated from within the pools. So everything's are kind of back to normal. Um, we're gonna go have a look at the pools over here. Get the right screen up. <laughs> so in addition to this, the network was stopped again last week due to a consensus failure, um, which is more of a, a technical hitch. You can see more details in this video here. So everything is back to normal. Um, that was fixed. The consensus failure was fixed. Everything's back and running and trading is back to normal as I um, kind of showed here. All the pools are running. You can see the stats um, and all that type of stuff. As Multi-Chain Chaosnet is now up and running and trying to stabilize, we want to see it running for quite some time. I wanted to take some time to explain what is going to happen now and some of the things that are coming up next. Liquidity caps and uh, raise the caps campaign. So caps are a bit of an issue for ThorChain because they prevent liquidity providers by adding liquidity into the network. You would have seen that, uh, you can't add liquidity because of the caps. So simply put, the amount of liquidity added by liquidity providers, which is known as total pooled, cannot exceed the amount of bond added by node operators. Else the node operators could profit by stealing funds. So the caps are in place to protect liquidity providers as well as the network. And you can get those uh, that information here. Here we have total active bond, and then we have total pooled. So this can't be bigger than that. It's good to be about half generally, and I think it's around 55% at the moment. You want more bonded, much more bonded than pooled. Have a look um, at my video on the incentive pendulum to understand more about that. So to raise the caps, more node operators are required, or more bond from existing node operators is required. Node operators are not easy to find. It requires deep technical skills and very large upfront capital to be a node operator. And existing node operators are not going to put in more bond than what is required. So as you can see here, these are nodes, like some of the active nodes, and this is the bond they put in, and this is in rune. So 1 million rune, 750,000 rune, not many people have that. It requires a lot of understanding to run them. Vault nodes, aka light nodes, has been proposed to address this issue, allowing a different type of node operator to be created that has a very little upfront technical knowledge as well as a low upfront capital to bond in. So you're looking at minimum bond of 10,000 rune here, much better than seven, 800,000 that you would need to be a full node operator. So by creating a lot of these, you create, you increase the total bond and then that'll allow the caps to be increased or raised quicker and then hopefully one day not required at all. 
TSS and charting beyond 40 nodes. What does that mean? There is a limit to how many TSS members there can be in a signing party. And TSS is what governs the Asgard vault. It is the Asgard vaults. So this is due to speed more than anything. So the more members that are added to the TSS signing party, the slow it goes. In single chain CalSnet, 36 was the limit. And in multi-chain CalSnet, 40 is going to be the limit. Once the node count hits 40, or 41 actually, uh, the Asgard vault is broken into two and the nodes are divided into two individual signing parties, one for each vault. So this is the current setup, and essentially, it's going to look like this. So once we get to 41 nodes, you'll have 21 in vault one and 20, 20 in vault two. And they're gonna be individual signing parties, each going through the key gen, as well as um, the key signing for when funds are moved in and out. This allows the network to scale, easier to grow. And it's a big deal for it to happen as this is the first time it's gonna happen with real funds. When the target of 250 nodes is reached, there'll be six or so Asgard vaults, each with their own signing party. So six of these vaults here. If you wanna learn more about TSS and the vaults, see some of my security videos here to get more information. Lastly, I wanted to go through the roadmap that we see here published in the latest dev update. So first we have churn and shard. So we have churning and, and you need to do a churn to do the Asgard charting and we've talked about that. We have the activation of the synths. So that's synthetics and that's all done. It's implemented, it's currently in testing um, and that will go live at some point. And do note uh, that when you mint a synthetic, you're adding to the total pooled amount. So therefore you're gonna hit the caps quicker and there'll be competition between liquidity providers and people wanting to mint synths. Uh, so, you know, solving that caps issue or raising the caps a lot quicker is gonna be required for synths to really flourish. The router, the, the Ethereum router is gonna be upgraded. And for what I hear, that's not really that exciting. Um, it's just something that needs to get done. Four names will be back. And that's really cool. You can create an alias instead of like having to put in your um, actual address. Uh, so that's why that's a bit of fun. That's also going to be required for bridges um, into the future. Vault nodes will need to be implemented. And as we talked about, hopefully that'll see the caps raise much quicker to the point that they're no longer needed because there's many, many um, vault nodes around. So there's more than enough bond um, in the system to, to cater for the synthetics being minted and liquidity being added to the network. And lastly, see, hopefully see some new bridges. Um, there's a couple in development. I saw some stuff around Terra, hopefully going to testing soon. I don't know when they're actually gonna be ready, but um, I do hope to see that sometime soon. Look, last thing I did wanna talk about is mainnet by Christmas, as there's a lot of talk for there. So to, these are my own opinions. I don't really know, I don't have any inside information or know any more than anyone else. Um, Thorchain is really a big IT project. Uh, developers usually don't have the best estimation and IT projects don't usually run on time. Additionally, uh, Thorchain is extremely complex and never been done before. And those type of projects usually take longer than what's expected to do anyway, just due to the complexity and unforeseen issues. In addition, mainnet is really just kind of a label. In very simple terms, the only difference between ChaosNet that you see now and mainnet is, is kind of like the core devs guiding hands. I mean, there's some admin keys and stuff like that, but it's more than the label and the, the devs ability to guide things and making sure everything's going right or correct issues that go wrong. So it's not going to be a major difference from what is seen now. Maybe it will happen by Christmas, maybe it won't. I don't actually know. I know that the funds are there to fund the development for quite a long time. So to me, um, I just take it as it comes and enjoy the benefits of the only cross-chain decks out there. In summary, as I said in my hack video, uh, I think here, the protocol has had um, a couple of stumbles now. And for me, I'm happy it has occurred because having seen the changes apply, the fixes come out of it and the discussion, it's made Thorchain better for it. There's lots on the horizon and we'll have to wait and see what happens. I can't give any more insights than that because really I don't have any. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, put them in the section below. Until next time, thanks. Bye.